Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. In this video, we will learn that how to find the slope and uh, displacement in a beam using the conjugate beam method. I have already solved one question on the conjugate beam method. Okay, it was uh, for the beginners, and this is a little bit an advanced uh, question. Uh, so let's try uh, to learn the concept uh, from this question. Okay. So I have been given a question which states that we have to find the displacement at point C and the slope at point B. Assuming the EI is constant and we have to use the conjugate B method. You can see a simply supported beam having pin at A and uh, roller at uh, B. Okay. And uh, there are three types of uh, three loads that are applied on the beam. Okay. Um, uh, all are concentrated loads. Okay two are having the magnitude of 5 newton and one is having a magnitude of 10 newton and the total span of beam is 20 meter okay so first let us recap what is the conjugate beam method so according to the conjugate beam method the slope at a point in the real beam this is numerically equal to the shear at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam okay and the displacement of a point in the real beam is numerically equal to the movement at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam okay so for uh, for our question first we will find the reactions uh, for our beam okay to draw the bending moment diagram so let us assume that ra and rb be the vertical reactions at a and b respectively in the upwards direction and taking a moment uh, about support b equal zero by assuming that clockwise moments are positive and anti-clockwise moments are negative so moment of uh, 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 moment of vertical reaction at a about point b is ra into 20 and it will be a clockwise moment because ra is pointing in the upward direction moment of 5 newton about point b is 5 into the, uh, 5 meter and moment of 10 newton about b is 10 into 10 meter and moment of this 5 newton about uh, this point b is 5 into 15 okay and uh, moment due to these three concentrated loads are anti-clockwise so this gives me the value of ra equal 10 newton and ra since our value of ra is positive so our assumed direction of ra is correct that is ra is in the upward direction and for vertical equilibrium of forces ra plus rb it will be equal to uh, 20 from this i will get the value of rb equal to 10 newton and also rb acts in the upward direction you can see the pd of this beam r and r b are pointing in the upward direction both are having a magnitude of 10 newton okay you can also find uh, since uh, the loading is symmetric so ra and rb will be equal to so they will be uh, equal to the half of the total load that is 10 newton total load is 20 newton so ra and rp is equal 10 newton after finding the ra and rb you can now draw the uh, bending moment diagram so bending moment diagram moment at a is equal to zero since it's a pin support moment at 5 meter is 10 into 5 that is 50 newton meter moment at 10 meter is that is at point c is 10 into 20 minus 5 into 5 which is 75 newton meter and moment at 15 is uh, 10 into 15 minus 5 into 10 minus 10 into 5 which is equal to 50 newton meter and moment at b is uh, equal to zero okay or you can also calculate is that is 10 into 20 minus 5 into 15 minus 10 into 20 minus 5 into 5 which is equal to zero okay so this is the bending moment diagram for this beam i have divided it by ei to make it m by ei diagram okay you can see our bending moment diagram is a uh, positive okay so moment at 5 is 50 newton meter at 10 is 75 newton meter and it at uh, 15 is again 50 newton meter and since this is a concentrated uh, uh, concentrated loads so our shape of the moment diagram will be linear okay now what you will do you will uh, first draw a conjugate beam and then you will load the conjugate beam with the m by ei diagram you can see the real and the conjugate beam for this so this is our real beam and this is our conjugate beam since uh, conjugate support of pin supports is also pin so support a and support b will be same that is in the real beam that is at a there will be a 
pin support in the conjugate beam and at b there will be a roller support now you will load the conjugate beam with the m by e m by ei diagram since m by ei diagram is positive so you have to uh, you have to load this beam with the m by ei diagram but the load should point in the upward direction because the moment uh, diagram is positive if it would have been negative then the load will act in the downward direction so this is our uh, conjugate beam now what you will do we have to find the slope at b so you will find the shear or vertical reaction at b uh, this will be numerically equal to the slope at beam in the uh, real beam and to find the displacement at c what you will do you will uh, find the uh, movement at c in the conjugate beam which will be numerically equal to the displacement in the real beam okay so let's find the uh, shear and movement in the conjugate beam to find the uh, slope at p we will find the vertical reaction at p so this is the conjugate beam and this is the fpd of the conjugate beam uh, you can see that i have divided the loading into the four parts the first part that is this one uh, it will be a triangular portion okay and total load for this will be uh, half of 50 divided by ei into 5 okay and it is acting at a distance of 2 into 5 by 3 which is equal 10 by 3 from support a okay and the next loading it consists of a rectangle and on the top of it is a, a triangle so for a rectangular portion total load will be uh, since a top of the rectangle is up to the 50 ei so uh, uh, this height of rectangle is 50 by ei and uh, its width is 10 meters so 50 by ei into 10 will be the uh, area of this rectangular loading and total load for this triangular load will be half of since total is 75 so 75 minus 50 is 25 so half of 25 divided by ei into 10 because base of the triangle is 10 okay and it is acting at a distance of 10 meter from support a that is 20 by 3 plus 10 by 3 which is equal to 10 meter and the third loading is also a triangular and its uh, total magnitude is 1 by 2 into 50 by ei into 5 okay and it is acting at a distance of 2 into 5 by 3 that is 10 by 3 from support b because centroid of the triangle is located at a distance of 2 h by 3 from the apex and h by 3 from the base okay so from uh, b support b its distance will be 10 by 3 meter okay so to find the uh, vertical reaction at b you will take movements about support a okay we will find the support reaction by also a y and b y let us assume these act in the downward direction because the loading on the beam is acting in the upward direction so we will assume that a dash y and b dash y will act in the downward direction and we will take the moment about support a equal zero and we will assume that clockwise moments are positive and anti-clockwise are negative so moment due to b dash y about point a is b dash y into 20 meter okay minus movement of uh, this load about support a it's a clockwise it's an anti-clockwise movement and magnitude will be equal to 1 by 2 50 divided by a into 5 into the lever arm which is 10 by 3 meter okay total load multiplied by the lever arm and movement of uh, this load that is the second that is a rectangle and the uh, large triangle about point a will be uh, uh, 1 by 2 sorry 50 divided by ei into 10 plus 1 by 2 25 divided by ei into 10 into 30 by 3 which is the lever arm or distance of the centroid of the load from point a and movement of this third load about point a is 1 by 2 into 50 by ei into 5 which is the magnitude of the total load into the lever arm which is 50 by 3 that is 20 by 3 plus 20 by 3 plus 10 by 3 which is 50 by 3 so uh, you will find uh, the sum of these three and divide it by 20 to get the value of b dash y so from this you will get the value of b dash y equal to 437.5 divided by ei this is the value of vertical reaction at 
support B in the conjugate beam. So this is numerically equal to the slope in the real beam at the point B. Okay. So slope at point B in the real beam is equal to 437.5 divided by E. Since the value is positive, it means the slope is in the counterclockwise direction. Okay. After finding uh, the slope, next we have to find the movement at C in the conjugate beam and it will be numerically equal to the displacement at point C in the real beam. Okay, To get the movement at point C, what we will do, we will cut a section in this conjugate beam at point C and let us consider only this right portion that is CB portion because we know the value of uh, B dash Y. Okay? So let's cut the section at uh, point C and consider only the right portion okay so for the right portion we will have this load that is 1 by 2 into 50 by ei into 5 which is here okay total length of this section will be equal 10 meter and let us assume here uh, the movement and shear uh, uh, movement is in the clockwise direction and shear is in the upward direction okay and this load that is 50 by ei into 10 plus 1 by 2 25 divided by e, ei into 10 now we have only the half portion of this so half portion of this that is uh, 50 by ei into 5 plus 1 by 2 25 by ei into 5 okay this is the load okay this uh, 50 by ei that is this rectangular half rectangular it will act at a distance of 5 by 2 meter from this point c and this half triangular that is 1 by 2 25 by a into 5 it will act at a distance of 5 by 3 from point c that is the h by 3 okay so after that we will take uh, the movement about support c equal to 0 to find the value of this m dash c okay we don't need to find uh, shear at c we only need to find the movement at C, which is our displacement in the real beam. So taking movement about C equals zero, again, assuming clockwise movements are positive and anti-clockwise movements are negative. So first movement is M dash C, it's clockwise. So write it uh, plus sign, that's M dash C. After that, the next movement is uh, due to this uh, load, that is one by two, 50 by EI into five. And it is acting at a distance of 20 by 3 meter from this point C. Okay, this load 1 by 2, 50 by EI into 5. It is acting at a distance of 20 by 3 from point C. That is 10 by 3. Okay, plus, uh, uh, sorry, 20 by 3 is the centroidal distance of this load from point C. Okay, which is shown in the FBD. After that, the next load is this uh, rectangular portion whose total load magnitude is 50 by EI into 5, okay, 50 by EI into 5, and it is acting at a distance of 5 by 2 meter from point C, okay, and uh, uh, movement uh, do, uh, due to these loads are uh, uh, anti-clockwise, okay, uh, after that, the third load is this uh, small triangle, its total magnitude is 1 by 2, uh, into 25 uh, divided by ei into 5 and it is acting at a distance of 5 by 3 meter from point c okay after that there is another movement that is due to the support reaction b dash y and it is a clockwise movement okay its magnitude is 437.5 divided by ei and it is acting at a distance of 10 meter from point c okay and summation of movement about point c is equal to zero from this you will get the value of m dash c equal to minus 2812.5 divided by ei okay and uh, this value is equal to the displacement in the real beam at point c since the value is negative it means the displacement is in the downward direction okay we assume that uh, positive displacement is in the upward direction and positive slope is counterclockwise and negative displacement is downward and negative slope is clockwise okay so this is the value of displacement at point c in the real beam that is 2812.5 divided by ei okay so this is how you can calculate the slope and displacement for any beam using the conjugate beam method what you have to do you have to first find the bending moment diagram for the real beam okay after that you have to draw the conjugate beam of the real beam and then load it with the bending moment diagram and after that you have to find the shear 
and the movement in the conjugate beam to get the slope and the displacement in the real beam at the corresponding points okay i hope this solution video was clear and effective and you definitely learned something new if you still have doubts you can uh, write them in the comment box i will try my best to answer your doubts okay and if you found this video helpful please subscribe to my channel share this video okay and stay tuned